Some people call me the space cowboy Yeah Some call me the gangster of love Some people call me Maurice Cause I speak of the pompatists of love People talk about me baby In this recitation video, we're going to be covering the right hand rule. First one we're going to look at is the right hand rule for cross products. For that, we're going to be considering all cross product equations. So for this, we'll have some resultant vector C is equal to A crossed with B. And how I always like to do it is with my thumb, index finger, and middle finger. The index finger represents vector A. The middle finger represents vector B, and the resultant vector is your thumb, C. So we deal with two equations of cross products. One of them has to do with a moving charge in a magnetic field, and the other has to do with a current in a magnetic field. In the first case, the vector A corresponds with the velocity vector B, and the magnetic field B, luckily enough, corresponds with B, and the resultant vector, the force, corresponds with C. And so our equation QV cross B, V is our index finger, B is our middle finger, and F is the thumb. Let's look at some examples. First, I encourage you to do them on your own. Here they are. So in the first example, we have a positive charge moving in a magnetic field that is going into the page. So let's line up our vectors accordingly. First vector is V, that is our index finger. The second vector B is our middle finger, that goes into the page, and we can see that our resultant vector must be up. So our force is in the upward direction. For this one, we have our index finger going this way, but the the magnetic field vector has no way to line up. So these two vectors that are parallel are going to have a cross product equal to zero. There's going to be no force on this charged particle. A third example is a negative particle moving in a magnetic field going up towards the top of the page. So first we line our index finger up with V. B, the middle finger, goes to the top of the page and this would result in a force going into this blackboard. However, since the charge is negative, we flip it. And the force comes out of the blackboard. The last example is a positive charge moving at this 45 degree angle with a magnetic field going uh, slanted. So our vector V is going up. Our magnetic field is lined up this way and our force is still into the page. Though this is going to result in somewhat of a spiral rather than a circular path. Now for the second cross product equation, the ones with currents in magnetic fields, here are three examples for you to try out. So for these problems, we're given the resultant force, which is the thumb in our right hand rule, and we're also given I, which acts as the index finger, and we're asked to find B, so we need to find the position of our middle finger given this configuration. So for the first one, the current is to the right, and it's feeling a force going up. So we line up I and F, and we see that B must be into the page. Now for this configuration, the current is coming out of the page. That's our index finger. Our resultant force is our thumb going up. And so B must be pointing to my right. For the last example, the current is going into the page. The force is pointed to the left towards me. And so my middle finger is left pointing down. That's where the magnetic field has to be. Now, we also have another right-hand rule, 
which I'll call the screwdriver right hand rule. And this is for magnetic fields created by current. And that is when you have a current, let's say it's going up here, the magnetic field makes loops around this current. And so if we may put our thumb in the direction of the current, the magnetic field is going to be the curl of our fingers. Now I have three problems for you to try to find the direction of the current given the magnetic field, so give it a shot. So for the first one, we have a magnetic field that is coming out of the page at the bottom and is curling into the page at the top. That means our fingers have to be doing some curl around like this. That leaves our thumb pointing towards me. So the current must be pointing to the left. The second problem gives a different angle, and these magnetic fields are looping counterclockwise. So if our fingers were to curl around, our thumb would be left pointing out. So this current must be coming out of the page. Now the last example is similar to the first. We have the magnetic field coming out on top and into the page on the bottom, looping around. The only way for that to occur is if the current is going up and to the right, this way. So those are our two right hand rules. I hope this helps and we'll see you next time. Business in your head, don't listen to it.